Hi, welcome to configuring NIC partitioning on Dell QL41000 series adapters. This is the first in a series of videos we will be providing for your reference. My name is Nick DeMaria and I will be your host for this video stepping you through the process. So let's get started. First off I want to show you the cards inside an operating system so that you can see exactly what we have and then compare it to after we set up NIC partitioning. So if I went in this server here as you can see if I did an IP address show my cards show up here as P5P1 as port 1 and P5P2 as port 2. I have one dual port card and I can do an LSPCI and graph for QL and you can see that's the card right here port 0, port 1, 41,000 series, 10, 25, 40, 50 gig controller so from here what we're gonna do is reboot the server and go into life cycle controller and from there we'll set up the card for NIC partitioning okay now that we're booted up into life cycle controller we go from this home page here and we start in system setup and go to the advanced hardware configuration and from here we go to device settings and then you can see our different devices that we have in this server the two that we're going to be playing with today are the QLogic or Marvell QL41000 series adapters. This is a dual port 10 gig adapter. So here's port 1 and port 2. Now in order to enable NPAR, you only need to enable it on one port. The whole card is enabled once you enable it on either port 1 or port 2, it doesn't matter. So we'll go to port 1. And as you can see from the main configuration page, we have firmware image properties, we have device level configuration, we have NIC configuration and data center bridging settings. We're going into device level configuration. But I want you to note that's all you see on this main configuration page at this time without NIC partitioning being enabled. As you can see in virtualization mode, it is none. So what we can do is select NIC partitioning or NPAR, SRLV, or NIC partitioning or NPAR plus SRIOV. We're going to select the standard NIC partitioning. Now, with standard NIC partitioning, it enables four physical functions on each port of the adapter. Since this is a dual port adapter, that would make eight physical functions on the card. There is, however, another mode called NIC partitioning extended partition mode which enables eight physical functions per physical port for a total of 16 physical functions per dual port adapter. But today we're only going to do the standard NIC partitioning for four physical functions per port. So we selected NIC partitioning or NIC NPAR and we say back. Now that we're back in the main configuration page, you see the difference here by NIC partitioning configuration option. So that wasn't there before. So we click on that and again, remember we're in port one here on this card. What we want to be able to do is enable partition two to give us one more physical function on this card, on this port. So we go to partition two and we say NIC mode. I just want to enable NIC mode. And I can also have NIC plus RDMA mode, which I will leave enabled. And I will say back. Before I do that, I want to point out that you can also see if you were going to enable the storage mode for FCOE, this is the place you do it. But that's a different video. We say back. We say back again. And we say finish. Please note here that these changes are being saved. But one of the things that has to happen is that the re it requires a system reset for these to take effect. So we say, yeah, we understand. The settings were saved successfully and we say great. Now we want to do the same thing on port 2. Okay, now that we are completed with setting up our partitions for port 1 and port 2, we can go back and check and see what we have available. And if we go here into NIC partitioning, we'll see that we have port partition 1 or physical function 1, physical function 2 enabled. 3 and 4 are both disabled. And this is on port 1 and it should be exactly the same 
on port 2. So let's just check that to make sure we're good. And yes, same thing on port 2. Okay, so that's all we really had to do for this. We want to go back into the operating system and see what it looks like there, how the devices are presented. Stay tuned. Okay, so here we are after rebooting the server. Now I will do the IP address show so that we can see our cards with the physical functions enabled. So here's the original card, P5, P1, which is P5 port 1, and then P5 port 2. Here on P5, P1, there is physical function 1. So it comes up as P5, P1 underscore 1, and then P5, P2 underscore 1 for physical function 1 on port 2, and then P5, P1 underscore 2 for port 1 physical function 2 or partition 2, and the same with port 2, physical function 2, or partition 2. And that you can see that these guys are here for sure. I will do an ETH tool minus I on one of them. And you can see the driver, version, firmware version, and so forth. Thanks for joining me today on this video presentation. I hope you now have a better understanding on how to configure NIC partitioning on the Dell QL41000 series adapters by Marvell. Again, my name is Nick DeMaria, and I look forward to sharing another how-to video with you in the near future.